Well, they added a gravity gun to Fallout New Vegas. Because spending myself to the edge of our No, I'm not gonna explain myself. This is how things are and how I've accepted my game to look. Our adventure begins with me getting shot in the head and killed. Shortly after a merchant sells a bunch of DLC to my dead corpse, I pull an Uno reverse card and not die. I am soon greeted by a man whose face could qualify him to be an expert scare at Monsters Incorporated. Can you tell me your name? What, can, what an idiot! Of course I can! He asked me if his face surgery was to my liking. How'd I do? It was not. Finally, once I fixed the terrible face he gave me, he Did got me on my on feet, feet, as to which my neck snapped in half. Good. Take it slow now. It ain't a race. Seen as the gravity gun would probably be an energy-based thingy, perception was the way to go. The dog then forced me onto his couch to answer a bunch of stupid questions that were completely irrelevant to my mission, so I blindly answered them, hoping that he would just drop dead of old age or something. While I stole all of his stormtrooper armor, he was attacked by your common household xenomorph. Luckily for him, he did have his trusty butter knife on him. And although I could have helped the old man, now very clearly bleeding internally, I decided to be a typical human and film it. Besides, he won in the end. I'm supposed to be retired. Well, at least with the alien. Maybe not the battle with his ruptured lungs. Anyways, regardless of him suffering from countless injuries, he still mustered the strength to slap a PS Vita into my hand and send me on my way. I was ready for whatever lie beyond this front door. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, ponies were now considered equal to humans. Somehow, PETA had won. I found Gordon Freeman's shack across town, and as per usual, he left his old gravity gun just laying by the fridge. Seeing as this was a gravity gun only quest, I got rid of everything that wasn't a gravity gun. Which was stupid, because I could have literally just sold everything. Well, it was finally time to get my Captain America suit of armor, so I invaded Skeleton High School and diagnosed them all with depression. They died shortly afterwards. Anyways, I got my Captain America armor, somehow managed to fit it over my fat head and onto my 470 pound figure, and still looked better than 80% of Instagram models. I was both ready to murder and get sponsored. Todd Howard refused my request for him to join my crew, so I uninstalled him politely, yet promptly. I went to the local bar, which was a big mistake. The pufferfish lady told me that she would teach me to shoot a rifle. As soon as I made it out to the shooting range, I knew this was going to be a problem. As much as I tried to please her thirst for broken bottles, my gravity gun could not provide her that satisfaction, and so I was exiled from town, never to show my face again as i took my first steps into exile i tripped off a rock and broke both of my legs pretty soon my companions turned on me so i knew that after i killed some skeletons i would kill them too so then using my quadruple digit iq i staged all of their deaths as accidents sadly larry the death claw just kept coming back there was only one thing left to do I lured them into an abandoned shack using cupcakes, and then I absolutely obliterated the mortal fools! They never stood a chance against my gravity gun! After I committed several war crimes against my companions, I ended up running into Bob the Builder, who warned me about death claws. Hold up. There are death claws all over. Well, I ignored Bye. that old boomer. As I was fending off literal dozens of death claws, I was attacked by skeletons using big irons. I was cornered on all fronts, so I defended my ground, tossing my enemies like sacks of potatoes. They were no match for my utter gamer ferocity. My destination was New Vegas, and not one thing would stand in my way to get there. I fought tongue and cheek through droves of death claws with nothing but a gravity gun in my wits about me. They took some pretty good swings at me, but in the end, they could not do a thing about me flicking them a hundred yards without breaking a sweat. Until, of course, they did kill me. 
They chased me straight into the outskirts of Vegas, where the savages lived. I threw them around just for fun. One of them even exploded. For a moment, I forgot about my mission. I was just enjoying the beauty of chucking their ragdoll bodies and making them experience inhuman glitching. And then the gnomes attacked, spitting acid at me like I was nothing more than target practice. I literally ripped off their pathetic beards with my gravity gun and used them as mop heads. They got what they deserved. Then I found a prospector with a nuka oh. quantum. So I responded naturally by tossing him over the nearest mountain. What do you need? The local skeletons were rather friendly, but their ponies upset me greatly. In fact, I was so upset that I lifted them up by their manes and threw them in the nearest direction. North, south, it didn't matter to me as long as they were ripped to pieces. And then I found humidified ponies who could speak. So once again, I tossed them out of town and then the skeleton shot at them and then the bird combusted into flame. I knew I had won. The town was once again safe. So anyways, I got into another gang fight with the Vipers, but their rockets didn't even phase my Captain America armor. After many battles, I did return to Good Springs, right? hoping that I had now the skill to complete my first quest. I, I still couldn't do it. I wasn't strong enough my hands were covered in blood but i could barely break a bottle everything all right completely embarrassed by my failure i rounded up all of the humidified ponies and tossed them i tossed them like they were nothing this would teach them a lesson that they would not soon forget so anyways i finally arrived at vegas met the incredible Later. barfing man <laughs> and waltzed right through that front gate. The city was so beautiful that my game crashed. And then I met what I could only assume to be a child who was out for blood. Sorry, but I need to shoot Stacy. Immediately after that, I somehow got into a gunfight, so I destroyed all of the nerds, but then the Naruto running alien came into the picture. Luckily, I had him cornered, and I absolutely annihilated him. Now, the big question is, have you ever met the incredible pig-headed man? Hey. Now you have. I went inside their lame clubhouse looking for the washroom, but then, of course, alien. So once again, the attack had begun, and then I hung that alien from the ceiling like a trophy. So then I met this thing. You're not a king. Does the king know you're up here? And I quickly put them out of their misery. The problem was apparently that wasn't okay. I then had to single-handedly fight every single living, breathing thing in that clubhouse. And at one point, they actually pinned me down and beat the crap out of me. Even unloaded about 30 rounds straight into my spleen. Unfortunately for them, I didn't have a spleen. And I threw every man, woman, and dog down every flight of stairs available to me. And then I finished the fight by messing up all of their folded laundry. I wanted even a moment's break, but as soon as I hit the streets, a balloon was shooting up the town again. It was a massacre, one that I did not want to be involved in. But I never get what I want. I chased the remaining survivor into a back alley, who then threatened to kill me. Nah, just some idiot that wandered down the wrong alley. This guy, this overall wearing punk. Well, I tossed him into the nearest garbage can and killed his family. A powerful lesson to be taught for sure. After that event, I headed to the strip where Gizmo Duck asked for a credit card check or he'd kill me. So I forked over the 2000 caps. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. For those of you that are more educated in the lore of DuckTales, you know not to mess with this guy. I was ecstatic to finally be in Vegas. Until I was finally in Vegas. Wow. It, partner. Ignoring everything I just saw, I headed straight to Michael Scott to continue my gravity gun quest. He basically asked me to be a big scumbag. Sure, I might be a murderer, a thief, a liar, a loiterer, a cheater, a lawyer, but I was no scumbag. Immediately, I turned around and asked Balloon Man for advice, but I also forgot he was a balloon and can't talk. Or could he? Uh -huh. When I left the building, I was just as disappointed in the city as before. I attempted to fight Ted, but sadly, his strength was just too beautiful. So, after I threw around some gizmo ducks, I finally made it to the Topps Casino, where I barged through the front doors and shot up everything inside. No one would be free from the wrath I bestowed upon this sinful environment. 
but that was just a dream. In reality, I was actually very polite. I kindly handed my weapons over to the nice man at the counter. And then I met Benny. Let's keep this in the groove, hey? Smooth moves, smooth. His face was so beyond distorted. I actually questioned whether or not I was the one to get shot in the head. He ended up sending me up to the presidential suite, asking me to wait for him. Knowing this was some sort of scam to sell me a fake timeshare or something, I immediately reported him to the desk clerk, who believed every word I said instantaneously. He then gave me all of my weapons back. I slapped on my gravity gun and headed up to the prez. And then this happened. I waited for Benny for at least three days before I headed down to find him being a big idiot. So I broke into the room, told Yes Man that I was literally the coolest guy ever, and watched this dude completely screw up his date. After getting completely intoxicated, I returned to Benny, watching him puke literally all over himself and then into a wall. After he got himself out of the wall, he refused to come to the press. So I gravity gunned him and all the boys and slammed them into the nearest booth. Pretty soon, their molecular structure actually molded them together like one of grandma's quilts. And nobody in the casino really seemed to mind. Not really knowing which one was Benny, I kind of just looted all of them until I found the platinum chip. I then left the fine establishment feeling fulfilled in my revenge. The next problem, all the gizmo ducks now were my enemies, so I had to fight them all the way back up to Michael Scott. When I finally arrived in the suite, I spent a solid 10 minutes beating the tar out of all of the Dwight Schrutes Michael appointed to attack me. I hacked his stupid computer, killed some more Dwights, and made it into a secret Twitch streamer room, where I caught him heavily engaged in VR. Why have you done this? Ask stupid questions, you'll win stupid prizes. Shabam, oh. you're gonna stay alive and watch everything you create burn. Maybe you'll think twice next time. Once again, I fought my way back out to the strip, fought everything on the strip, limped my way back to Yes Man, and gave him the okay that Michael Scott was done for. Wonderful. Yes Man hacked into the mainframe harder than Tom Cruise ever has and gave me all the juicy deets on the factions around Vegas. I head out to continue on my quest. Turns out the Kardashians were in Vegas and I got to meet one. Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome to the finest bald hotel in the whole world. Okay. But as per usual, she sicked her robot army on me. And then I met this guy. He's clearly a loser. I set out into the wasteland and came across my first contact with Caesar's legion of skeletons and pink-haired freaks. I tossed them out of town like a bad cup of coffee that's so bad you literally must toss it out of town. Anyways, after that fiasco, I fought a bunch of geckos in a local water treatment plant. It turns out some of them were actually nuclear. I ended up in another fight with Caesar's Legion on the way to beat up Caesar himself, so obviously I flicked them around like a spider. Any mountain I could see, they would fly over it. Any opportunity I got to break every bone in their body by crushing them against a rock, it was taken. In fact, at one point, the geckos got involved and then people were flying around and the geckos would chase them down like some twisted murder game of fetch which was quite entertaining actually. As fun as that was, I moved on. And by that, I mean moved on straight into gnome territory where I sent them flying in every direction known to man and several known to gnome exclusively. But sadly, I tripped down the hill in an upwards way or something like that. The gnomes had been taken care of, and all that was left was the entirety of Caesar's Legion. Only slightly more powerful than the Garden Gnomes, the Legion fought valiantly, but also pathetically in my eyes. They were no match for my gravity gun that sent them crawling on their broken legs back to Caesar. I killed them so much that some of them came back to try their luck against me again as a skeleton. Just to rub salt in the wound, I went into their food storage and made an absolute mess. I mean, there was corn in the karaoke machine. That's how bad it was. So then, I headed up to the fort. I was greeted as a hostile, typical behavior from someone who looks like this. So I unleashed my fury. I slammed the legionaries against every surface provided to me, and I would toss them up high enough that Caesar would see them from his tent. Caesar sent his two bravest children to defeat me. They were nothing against my power. 
This was the final guard before Caesar's camp. He actually flew the furthest and broke every record I had on distance traveled, also on Bones Broken. This loading screen got me pumped and ready to go. And then the great battle began. Caesar sent every single one of his greatest warriors to try and take out me, Gravity Gun Captain America Man, but not a single one of them even stood a chance. And I mean, look at this. Look at this pathetic tribe of utter embarrassments. In my fit of rage, I took all of their clean dishes and threw them on the ground. The battle was intense and long fought for sure, but luckily I was able to ignore a lot of the damage as their bullets were going through the bullet holes already in me. Finally, I had made it to their secret base where I stuffed all the legionaries under a desk like a bunch of nerds in high school and stole their milk money. Anyways, I went downstairs, activated an entire lethal force of world destroyed robots and then headed straight up to the big boss he sent his most colorful hair guards after me but not one of them could lay a single hit on me and by that i mean most of them laid multiple hits on me but it didn't matter eventually i broke them all down threw them against every wall that i could shattered all their dreams and kneecaps and after all of this damage was done I tossed Caesar like a salad. And as I sat upon his throne, still warm, I celebrated my victory by staring at all the death around me and then absolutely tearing apart their storage room. Have fun cleaning that up, Karen. But enough fun. Gravity waits for no one. I headed to the train station nearest to the Brotherhood secret base, where I was, of course, ambushed skeletons everywhere absolutely everywhere the legion popping out of the ground like weeds so i had to uproot them as such an alien came to assassinate me but luckily the death claws were having their annual general community potluck so they ripped it up to shreds but then they came after me so i ran and the fighting ended only when a gecko exploded off in the distance also when they killed me after a rather intense engagement, I wandered aimlessly for hours on end, searching frantically for the Brotherhood. When all hope seemed lost, when I felt that this may be where my journey would end, a light in the dark shone bright to guide my way. But sadly, hope was gone once again when I was commanded to strip down to nothing, strip off your clothes, threaten to be shot, normally I would have already shot you, and then told to go kill an NCR Ranger because he was being a peeping Tom. I want him driven off. So I snuck up on him. Thought you'd sneak up on me, you filthy powder ganger? And then what seemed to be a rather unfortunate turn of events, the Brotherhood decided to get involved, which I was not a fan of, so to show my utter distaste for their actions, I picked them up and threw them around like a cat playing with a mouse. Until this guy decided to be a jerk. After I wiped the floor with those Brotherhood suck-ups, I headed straight to their little underground pillow fort and challenged Ramos to a fight. He was actually so bad at the game that I realized that it would be easy to just destroy the Brotherhood. And so that's exactly what I did. I marched around the fort with pride in my heart and a skip in my step. It was like a Disney movie almost, but if I was the bad guy and the bad guy was slaughtering all the alleged good guys with a gravity gun. By the end of my escapade, the Brotherhood Knights were begging for mercy, but I was already Winston. I programmed the base to explode, shoved all the remaining knights into a closet, put up a child-proof lock on the door behind me, and let that place go up in flames. After this much success, I headed back to Good Springs to finally complete that first quest. Sunny was still standing there, determined I would actually learn. But... But I still couldn't do it. I couldn't break a single bottle! Everything all right? Everything was not all right. So to cheer myself up, I headed out to declare war on the great cons. I immediately talked to a Legion member named Carl. And oh, I knew he would be trouble. So I made him look like an absolute idiot in front of all of his friends so that they would just shoot him to death, just like in real life. How dare you compare Caesar's finest to this tribe of savages? Hey! Then I found a gang of completely glitched out creatures as to which I just launched them into the stratosphere, along with their boss, Yaoi, who was a straight up sleep paralysis demon. As I ran to the boomers, a noise broke the silence. Luckily, from that point on, it was a pretty safe travel to the gate. This lady kept babbling on, so I decided to just leave and never return. My next stop, the Ultra Lux. SpongeBob demanded my weapons from me, so in turn, I did the obvious thing. 
As I fought my way through tourists, bankers, swimmers, and 9-to-5 do-gooders, I knew I had my work cut out for me. Luckily, the gravity gun outdid all of their pathetic weapons, especially the people that weren't packing anything. I ended up accidentally cooking everybody in the swimming pool, which was actually a blessing in disguise, as I could tell that half the people in the pool had definitely eaten within half an hour of swimming. I managed to single-handedly take out most of the casuals, but soon, I found myself in the midst of a Spongebob fan fiction convention. All of a sudden, I was wasted out of my mind. The next three hours were an absolute blur, and all I can remember is the sound of their pitiful screams and the scent of gunpowder and electricity and all of a sudden i snapped out of it i stood wearing one of their faces on mine i had no idea what had happened but i knew that my gravity gun had carried me through the night i let yes man know that i had killed and or shunned everyone in the wasteland and i was ready to tackle the final task seriously you just made my day he sent me to an ncr radio broadcast no doubt to stop them from blasting baby shark all day long when i entered the building i knew what was coming next I destroyed their tech, killed all of their stormtroopers, and somehow managed to do all of that without them absolutely hating me. Are you ready to head for the dam? This was it. The final mission in beating New Vegas with only a gravity gun in my hands. There was no turning back now, and besides, there was literally nothing to turn back to. Everyone was dead. And so I made my way to Hoover Dam. The fight atop Hoover Dam was nothing short of spectacular. I've never thrown so many losers off such a high place, but of course, Caesar's pink-haired centurions were using illegal weapons, so they occasionally got the best of me. Knowing things might be too difficult being sober, I drank 70 beers to the point where I could almost access the Matrix without taking the red pill. For the next 30 minutes, I absolutely annihilated every living thing on the bridge, innocent or not, and all of a sudden, I found myself randomly on a tower next to a stormtrooper, so I killed him. My first task, mess up their games room. No fun would be allowed in my Hoover Dam. My next objective was to explode the dam. In the process of this, I ended up breaking both of my legs and my eyes. My eyes! All I did was open a door and the NCR completely lost their mind, so I had to put them down. Then the racket caused from my tussle with the inferior NCR guards caused Caesar's Legion to come after me as well. Once again, I was throwing these losers down any hallway I could, and then I met Mike. I'm gonna go find some place safe to hide out. Oh yeah, he was definitely gonna die today. Now the problem with the exploding Hoover Dam is that it actually makes you shunned by the Galactic Empire. Ah, well, that's how things go. Mike was definitely dead. I then let the Legionnaires and the NCR go at it for a little bit, as I just enjoyed the peace and quiet for once. But enough was enough. I went out there like a mom bursting in on her kid listening to that sinful rap music and killed everyone in sight. Hoover Dam was destroyed and I was almost done with my task. Yes Man's robots cleared the way for me to get to Little Caesars without having to order Uber Eats, which was a nice change of pace. I fought the remaining Legion forces, which was only about five or six dudes who didn't get the memo not to go to work that day. After they had been put in their place, I confronted potentially the most vicious enemy I've ever met. An envoy of Vegas. Yet you carry yourself for battle. Let us hope your skill with weapons proves greater. I negotiated like I had never negotiated before. I was sweating all over my custom fit Captain America cosplay. My SpongeBob mask hid nothing but pure fear for my own life. In the end, I managed to convince Easy Pete to back down, and he left without a word. Bye. And then I made my exit. I didn't really have time for this guy, so as long as he wasn't rude to me... I know you're riding high right now, but let me tell you. All right, throw him off the bridge. And so the courier's road came to an end for now. Okay, wow. If you're here right now, that means that you just sat through literally my longest video ever created. So congratulations. You have won a free ticket to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell. Congratulations. Everybody, round of applause for this viewer. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night.